9.7 Modeling with Functions. This is the la last lesson in Chapter 9 of your Advanced Functions textbook. That's the Nelson book. And I'm going to go over just a few of the ideas in it with an example because there really isn't too much new introduced here. There is a lot of work with graphing calculators or um, maybe Fathom or you've used Desmos in your class or just simply your graphing calculator. So that kind of lesson is one that it's pretty hard for me to teach. But we'll talk about the different types of, of equations when you're dealing with functions of any type. And first of all, I just want to talk about um, when you have linear growth. And this is a subject you learn in grade nine. You know, nice like straight line growth like this. And, and that's good for some examples, uh, you know, such as um, sales and commissions if you start a certain rate and you add so much get an incremental amount every time you hit a sales target so it's linear growth um, we talked about exponential growth which would be something like this where you start and then it increases very very quickly um, the problem with these models is that there is no what we call carrying capacity or maximum value so if you're talking about population growth, this doesn't make sense because there is a point after which you reach a maximum and things start to level out again. And that's what they introduce in this section that is new. And I'm going to do one of the word problems from your homework assignment, perhaps your homework assignment. And it's number four from the Nelson's textbook and we'll run over that. And that's going to be it for chapter nine. Now I'm sorry that I don't have a practice test for you. The only practice test, or the only test I gave my class was a very simple multiple choice one. Um, if you want, I could post that on the PB Wiki site, but I'm not going to go over that. The next lesson will be me taking up a practice exam with you. So it'll probably be a, a three-part lesson, and the link to the final exam will be on, I'll put it on the end of... Uh, the description for this lesson and also when I start uploading the solutions. So a lake in northern Ontario, um, I think in the textbook was a very wordy word problem just discussing on how it had an oil spill and they had to restock the fish and this is what they were doing. So they put 800 trout into the lake at time zero. This is assuming there were no fish in the lake after the oil spill. So at time zero they put in 800 and by the year 10, they had 6,000 fish. And the question was, with a carrying capacity of 8,000, first make a graph of the ex with the existing information. So the given information here. So I have at time zero, I have 800 fish. So it would be somewhere around here. After 10 years, we were up to 6,000. And the carrying capacity is 8,000. So you would probably do something like you could draw a nice straight line growth like this because you're not really sure how it's all working. And then it's going to go up to this amount here. So it should level off like this by year 20. So not a very exciting graph and we don't really have a, a nice equation. You could do it probably in two parts like a piecewise function. But that's all they wanted for the existing or given information. So the next part is the part I want to focus on because it's it's something that's a little different for you. It's not difficult. It looks much more difficult than it is. It says determine the parameters for a logistic model where they give you this equation. So this is an equation that covers the carrying capacity of um, a population. So you end up with kind of an S shaped curve like this that levels out as you reach the carrying capacity. So what we're going to do is we have to figure out what A and B are. So they say determine the parameters for a logistic model. So I need to figure out what um, A and B are here so that I can figure out how many there would be after four years. So in order for to do this question, we need to have two points on the graph and we have to know what the carrying capacity is. So let's write this here. We need two points two points and the second thing we need the carrying capacity. So again the carrying capacity is just the maximum number of 
the population that you can have before it starts to decrease. Sort of like planet Earth, like what's our carrying capacity on this planet? Well, it depends on what we eat, right? If we all ate vegan food or we probably could feed a lot more people than if people have to eat meat because meat takes up a lot of area and grasslands and that's another topic altogether, isn't it? Okay, so we need two points and we do have two points. We had the point, the population at time zero, which was 800. So that meant that they put the 800 fish in at time zero. And we had another point, I'm just going to write it way over here, the population after 10 years, and that was 6,000. So these are given. Okay, I didn't just make these numbers up. And our C, the carrying capacity, is um, the maximum, which is 8,000. So I'm going to use that. First of all, I'm going to use it to find A. Now you can see that if I put in time zero here, that would make B one. So that's perfect. We can solve for that. So our population at time T is 800. The carrying capacity is 8,000. And I'm dividing it by one plus, now my A value is what I'm solving for, and times B to the power of zero. Now again, this is just going to be one, right? So that makes everything really pretty. So I just have 8,000 over one plus A, and I can solve for A. So cross multiplying here would give me 800 plus 800A is equal to 8,000. I subtract 8,000 on both sides. I get 800A is equal to 7,200. And I divide by 800 and that gives me A is equal to, get rid of the two zeros, and I'm dividing 72 by eight, and that gives me nine. Okay, so now that I have what A is, I can use this second point here, plug it all in and solve for B. So population after 10 years was 6,000. So I'm going to let 6,000 be equal to the carrying capacity. So I'm setting up my equation. Nice, I've got 8,000 up here, carrying capacity. One plus A now is nine times B to the power of, and in this case it was 10. So how do I find B here? Well, I would cross multiply again. So that gives me 6,000 plus 9 times 6 is 54,000 B to the power of 10 equals 8,000. So now I'm going to subtract the 6,000 over here. So I'm going to get 54,000 B to the power of 10 is equal to and I have, I subtracted this, so that gave me 2,000. I'm dividing by 54,000. So that's going to give me 1 over 27. Okay, did you follow all that? So 2 over, uh, 2,000 over 54,000. 2 over 54 is 1 over 27. Okay, so now that I have that, I have to... Oh, just a minute, I shouldn't say 54,000 here because I divided that out all at the same time, right? Did it all in one step. Maybe I should have shown you all the steps. So B to the 10th is 1 over 27, and then you would take out your calculator. And don't forget how to use um, your calculator to find um, a 10th root. So I have 1 divided by 27, oh, not 27, 1. One the bracket, bracket one divided by 27, bracket to the power of, and it's a tenth, right? The tenth root is one divided by 10. And that gives me the wrong answer because I didn't put it in brackets. So what it did was made it to the power of one and divided by 10. Don't make that mistake. That's why I do these things for you, really. One divided by 27 to the power of bracket one divided by 10, or you could have put 0.1, would have been probably easier. Oh, what a difference a bracket makes, right? So I get 0.71922. Let's do three decimals, so 0.719. Okay, so now I can set up this entire equation. I can say 
population times t is going to be, this is for our trout population now, so we have 8,000 divided by 1 plus 9 times 0.719 to the power of t. Now how easy was that? Let's hope your teacher gives you a question like that on your unit test because it's, it's pretty simple. Oh, and then it said to graph it. Well, let's find the other point here. Let's find one more point here. So how many fish after four years? So that's the population at year four. So I have 8,000 divided by 1 plus 9 times 0.719 to the power of 4. And if you do that on your calculator, you should get, let me see, I did it, I did it, I did it, point, uh, 2,349. That's a lot of little fishies in the water. Now this doesn't talk anything about the fishermen going in. And I like that it was Northern Ontario because that's where I'm from. Okay, what is the average rate of change in the first four years? No, first four years. So at time zero, we knew what the population was, was 800. We put 800 in. So the average rate of change is equal to, now uh, we have our 2349. And we're going to subtract the initial at time zero. That was 800 divided by 4 minus 0. So it's just a slope calculation. Remember, average rate of change, slope of a secant. We're going to be doing lots of that in calculus. And we get about 387.33. Now, I always thought this was kind of dumb to say a third of a fish. You can't have a third of a fish. Why not just say 387? And then you need units, remember? Trout per year. And there you go. Okay, so let's go back over to this where they asked you to make a sketch of it. So our time zero, we had 800. That's about just under half of that because that's 2,000. And after 10 years, we had 6,000. So my 10-year mark is here. We're up to 6,000. And uh, what did we have for P4? Uh, 2349. So 2349 would be about here. So it's coming up like this. And then it's going to level off. So you get that kind of S-shaped curve. So by 20 years, we should have reached our capacity. You can figure out how much, how many fish it would be after 20 years. It might be a nice little calculation. And my pencil just ran out of lead. Okay, so that's good because I'm done the lesson. So, um, yeah, once again, thank you all for watching my, my YouTube lessons. Um, I hope you've subscribed to the channel, and I hope that you find the exam review really helpful for you. It'll be, um, you have to be careful, though, because, you know, different teachers emphasize different parts of the course, and your teacher might give you a different outline as to what you should know. But um, you can at least try that one and see how much you know. And then I'm hoping to start calculus and vectors next. And um, if you could leave a comment below as to whether or not your teacher is starting with calculus or vectors. It is two separate types of math. So generally in my course, I always taught the vectors first because I wanted my students to, um, to have calculus freshest in their mind. Because most of them went on to take calculus and not too many of them were going on to be engineers and using the vectors. So if you let me know, I'll take a little poll and then I can... Um, Maybe I'll put a poll on this video and and adjust my lessons accordingly because I can't really do both of them at the same time. And um, secondly, I am going away for five weeks, so I want to get as much done as I can for you before I leave in March. So this is Christmas time. Merry Christmas to you. If it's not, all the best and good luck with your exam. And make sure you take a look at the practice exam. Bye for now.